Welcome to another Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday. Brought to you by the National RV Training Academy, the largest hands-on RV training academy in America. Hey, this week there was a question that was asked, how do we the service or maintain lithium batteries? I'm not only gonna answer that, but I'm also going to answer one more thing, and that is, really, when do we switch from you know lead acid over to lithium? I mean, because there's pros and cons either way. Now, first and foremost, let me answer the first question, which is how do we maintain and or service the lithium batteries? Now, lithium batteries don't need servicing. There are a few steps that we need to go through in order to maintain them, just like any other battery. So when we're talking about maintenance, the first thing is we need to make sure we have good, tight connections. Any loose connection on a battery is just, you know, a recipe for disaster, right? These electrons are jumping across this loose connection. It's going to create heat. It's going to create corrosion and everything else. And that all creates resistance. Just bad for the batteries. But there's no water to fill up or anything else, okay? Here's the consideration with lithium batteries, right? When it's really cold. Now, most of us, if we have a lithium battery, because of the cost of the lithium battery, we're putting that somewhere inside the RV or somewhere inside a storage bay. Notice I said inside the RV because a lithium battery doesn't off gas, much like a, a lead acid battery does. So yes, it is safe to actually have those inside the RV with some exceptions. We really don't want it on the outside of the RV simply because of the cost of those. They grow legs and walk off. But cold weather, when we get down to about 32 degrees or zero Celsius, that's whenever we have a consideration with lithium batteries. So let's say it, you are RVing in cold weather, right? So all you really need to do is just make sure that that battery is warm. So again, if you have it in your storage bay, you may want to check to see if your storage bay is ducted for the furnace. You turn on the furnace, you're now warming up that storage bay. <laughs> There's nothing you have to do with those lithium batteries as long as you're not in like extreme cold weather. Now, I know some of you go, well, Todd, I, I RV up in Alaska. Why? First off, but if it's negative 20 outside, yes, you may want to add a little bit more heat, guys. A heating blanket can help out, um, uh, an incandescent light bulb. You want to keep that temperature above 32 degrees. So there's different ways, cheap ways, to actually keep that temperature up. You can also buy a battery that has that heating pad in it. Now, cost-wise, I think they're a little expensive. I think they could bring the price down. But if you have those, then everything's already set. You just want to monitor it from time to time. If it's outside the rig, that's where we have that consideration. If it's really cold weather and you have that lithium battery on the outside of the rig, you don't want to charge it at a high amp draw. You don't want to charge it cold weather. So we need to let your charger, if you're very cold weather, drop the charger down to about five amps. Once you get down to about five amps, that's all that will go through. The battery can handle that. We just don't want to charge these in very, very cold weather. So find a way, an economical way to keep the batteries warm. So good tight connections. Uh, make sure that we don't overuse them, overcharge them. So we got to have a good charge controller, which we've talked about before and we make sure that we don't discharge them too much storage-wise. Let's go ahead and cover that. Storage-wise, we want to completely charge and discharge these batteries at least once every six months. So how long are you keeping it in storage? If you're going to keep it in storage, say for two months, one month, two months, you could just simply turn off the battery disconnect on a lithium battery and let it sit. Now, when you come back to actually get it um, go back out. You may want to go ahead and provide a charge for a little bit, but you're not going to hurt that battery. At the six month mark, we do want to fully charge it, fully discharge it, keep it exercised. Okay, so that's really the only maintenance you have to do. Now, if you're RVing only once every six months, you're doing it wrong in the first place. Okay, so move. Now, let's go ahead and cover quickly when do we switch over because there's pros and cons. Almost all RVs now come with lead acid batteries. Some of the OEMs are starting to actually put in lithium batteries. When do you switch? Well, here's the thing. A lead acid battery doesn't last as long as a lithium battery and it does require maintenance, but cost-wise they're very cheap, right? Anywhere from 80 to $120. If you're always, always, always plugged into shore power, you can stay with that lead acid battery because you also have the help of the converter and you're going to extend the life of that battery because you're not using it as much, right? 
If, however, you're going to you know, run off of an inverter um, or, or you're gonna go uh, out and you want to have inverted power, well then when we go to an inverter, this is where we want to go ahead and switch over to lithium batteries. Lithium batteries are sprinters. They're, they're made to handle high amp output to last a, as long as the life of the battery. A lead acid battery can't handle that. These are joggers. I'm making the jogger battery sprint. I'm making you sprint all the time. You're not going to do it, right? These batteries were designed for it. Lithium batteries are designed for it. Lead acid batteries are not. So my consideration is if you're always plugged into shore power, you can stick with your lead acid battery. If you're looking at using an inverter, or um, let's say you just wanna go ahead and upgrade, and you wanna spend the money, then I would recommend go ahead and switch it over to lithium. I get a, a purer or a cleaner 12 volts, actually I get a little bit stronger than a 12 volts, it's gonna last longer, it doesn't, I get more out of the battery than I would the lead acid battery. But I take away all the maintenance factors when I go over here to a lithium battery. And there's your tech tip. All right, before you get to the bloopers, which is why you're here in the first place, the RV industry needs thousands of RV technicians and inspectors, and now is the perfect time to do that. If you want to make more money or have more control over your time, go ahead and click the link below. Or if you just wanna learn how to fix your own RV, got something for you there. Head over to rvtechcourse.com and get started today. Now for the reason that you're at the end of the video, Roll the bloopers. I didn't do anything wrong. I know you're waiting for all the, all the funny stuff. Ha 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 ha. I didn't mess up. Why? Because I had caffeine today. Mic check. Ooh. Check. Well, sorry. Didn't me. <laughs> yes. Hello, everybody. Hey, 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 hey. All right, we good. The brain is thinking. Pow, 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 pow.